Battery researcher Jeff Don and Tesla Motors Canada recently filed a patent application that reveals some of Tesla's latest battery research. This patent application specifically deals with new electrolyte additive combinations that enhance the lifetime and performance of lithium ion batteries, while also lowering the cost and complexity of manufacturing. As a reminder, or in case you're not familiar with Jeff Don's work, he is a well-respected and leading expert when it comes to lithium ion battery technology, and he has an exclusive contract with Tesla where he does research at Dalhousie University in Canada. This partnership has been in place for a number of years, and recently this was renewed, so this partnership will last at least through 2026. If there's a battery patent with Jeff Don's name on it, it's definitely worth checking out, and we're going to do just that in this video. Lithium ion batteries have become a vital part of our modern lives, powering many devices from cell phones and tablets to our cars. In our efforts to reduce air pollution and also to reduce CO2 emissions, lithium ion batteries are arguably one of the most crucial yet limiting factors in this effort. And while many improvements have been made to our modern lithium ion batteries over the last several decades, there are still some problems that need to be solved and there is still plenty of room for improvement. Two of the main improvements that Tesla has been spending a lot of focus on are lowering the cost and increasing the supply of lithium ion batteries. Tesla also appears to have a breakthrough technology on their hands with their new 4680 batteries, which promise to drastically lower the cost per kilowatt hour for batteries, much in part due to the new manufacturing efficiencies, which in turn also lead to a greater supply of batteries. For Tesla, reducing manufacturing complexity and also reducing the cost of batteries is the name of the game. In past videos, I've talked in great detail of many of the ways that Tesla is working to reduce the complexity and lower the cost of manufacturing batteries. This includes some of the seemingly insignificant processes of battery manufacturing, like the formation process. And if you haven't watched the recent video I put out on this topic, I'll put a link in the description for you to check it out. So with all that being said, let's dive into the exciting details revealed in this patent application, which once again seem somewhat insignificant on a surface level, but they're really important. This patent details the technology that Tesla should be able to use to decrease the number of electrolyte additives needed in high performance batteries, and this will in turn help lower the cost and decrease the complexity of battery cell manufacturing. Using electrolyte additives in the battery manufacturing process to improve the lifetime and also the performance of lithium ion batteries is definitely not new, but Tesla has apparently figured out a way to reduce a number of these additives and still produce a very high performance battery. As Tesla points out in this patent application, previous known research has indicated that three, four, or even five additives are generally necessary to achieve the desired battery cell characteristics like high performance and long cycle life, even at higher charge rates. Here is how Tesla summarizes this research on electrolyte additives. Prior studies have not identified two additive electrolyte systems that can be combined into a lithium ion battery system to yield a robust system with sufficient properties for grid or automobile applications. And as with any manufacturing process, anytime you add more inputs or more steps, this increases the cost and the complexity of manufacturing. And this is something that Tesla is working to reduce cost and complexity. As Tesla puts it, because additives can be expensive and difficult to include within lithium ion batteries on a manufacturer's scale, more simple yet effective battery systems are needed, including those with fewer additives. So in true Tesla fashion, if unnecessary manufacturing complexity and cost inefficiencies exist, they will work on a way to simplify and lower the cost of that process, including a once again seemingly insignificant detail like reducing the number of electrolyte additives. And also remember that in order for Tesla to be able to do this effectively, they can't reduce the performance and the lifetime of their lithium ion batteries when they reduce the number of additives. They have to be able to reduce the number of additives and still have a battery that performs just as good or better than those with three, four, or five electrolyte additives. And based on this patent application, Jeff Don and his research team have apparently figured this out. If you've been enjoying this video so far, please remember to click that like button. And also if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing as well. 
While the current approach apparently involves adding three, four, or even five electrolyte additives to achieve a truly robust battery cell, Tesla Canada with Jeff Don and his team have apparently found a way to achieve long battery cell life and good performance characteristics with only two electrolyte additives. This patent application summarizes their research and findings in the following way. This disclosure includes two additive electrolyte systems that enhance performance and lifetime of lithium ion batteries while reducing cost from other systems that rely on more additives. On a side note, something that's not really as crucial to our conversation but was mentioned in this patent application, so I'll mention it as well, but the battery cells that they tested this two electrolyte combination on had a nickel, manganese, cobalt cathode and a graphite anode. This of course is different from the nickel cobalt aluminum chemistry that Tesla currently uses for their 18650 and 2170 battery cells. However, as Tesla demonstrated on this slide shown during the battery day presentation, they apparently plan to use a nickel manganese cobalt chemistry for the Model S, X, 3, and Y, and maybe even power walls in the future. It is also very likely that this two additive approach mentioned in this particular patent application will not only function well with a nickel manganese cobalt based battery, but it's very possible it could also function well with other chemistries, for instance, nickel cobalt aluminum like Tesla's other batteries. When it comes to the primary focus of this patent application, the actual electrolyte additives themselves, most of the time is spent focusing on the following two combinations. The first combination is vinylene carbonate and ethylene sulfate or another sulfur containing additive may be substituted for the ethylene sulfate. And throughout this patent application, they abbreviate the vinylene carbonate as VC and the ethylene sulfate as DTD. The second combination is fluoroethylene carbonate and ethylene sulfate or once again another sulfur containing additive can be substituted for the ethylene sulfate. And throughout this patent application, they abbreviate the fluoroethylene carbonate simply as FEC and once again, the ethylene sulfate DTD. We'll come back to these electrolyte additives in just a minute, but this patent application goes on to talk further about the chemistry of the electrolyte itself. They mentioned that the electrolyte is made up of a lithium salt dissolved in an organic or non-aqueous solvent, which may include methyl acetate, and two additives to form a battery system with desirable properties for different applications. Apparently this methyl acetate solvent is used for applications that require high charge rates without damaging the battery cell. For instance, for electric vehicles, which need to charge very quickly to be practical. Here's how Tesla describes this. In certain embodiments, methyl acetate is used as a solvent in concentrations of up to 60%, to improve battery system lifetime when higher charging and discharging rates are expected, as well as other properties. This is particularly important for vehicle and other applications. Methyl acetate can be added to electrolyte systems containing vinylene carbonate or fluoroethylene carbonate with ethylene sulfate to increase electrolyte conductivity and lower viscosity without sacrificing much lifetime. Increasing conductivity and decreasing viscosity is important for certain applications requiring a faster rate of charge. In addition, I was able to locate another research paper that listed Jeff Don as one of the authors, and this particular research paper deals specifically with this methyl acetate solvent. In this research paper, the authors describe one of the common problems with fast charging a lithium ion battery in the following way. Lithium ion cells for electric vehicles should have long lifetime, high energy density, and be able to support high rate charging. If cells are charged too rapidly for a given temperature, it is possible that unwanted lithium plating on the graphite negative electrode can occur and can accelerate cell capacity loss. However, this research goes on to talk in great detail about how methyl acetate as a solvent can solve this problem and will lead to a battery that is able to have a high rate of charge yet not be damaged with as much lithium plating. Interestingly enough, the main electrolyte additive combinations mentioned in this research paper are the same as the ones mentioned in the Jeff Don Tesla Canada patent application that we have been discussing. Here are a few excerpts from that research paper talking about methyl acetate and how it makes a difference. 
Unwanted lithium plating significantly shortens the lifetime of cells requiring high rate charging at 20 degrees Celsius. Adding methyl acetate significantly reduces the likelihood of unwanted lithium plating at high rate charging at 20 degrees Celsius. They also mention cells with 2% vinylene carbonate plus 1% ethylene sulfate and 2% fluoroethylene carbonate plus 1% ethylene sulfate in electrolytes with 20% methyl acetate showed capacity retentions of 92.8% and 91.2% respectively after 1300 cycles when tested to 4.3 volts at 40 degrees Celsius. So as you can see, the methyl acetate solvent definitely plays a really important role in a robust battery cell, especially when it comes to high rates of charge being needed. However, I'd like to move back now that we've covered that back into the actual electrolyte additive combinations themselves and specifically focus in on some of the measurable benefits that were talked about in this application. First of all, they mention how these additives lead to lower electrolyte degradation. They mention two additive systems containing vinylene carbonate and ethylene sulfate and fluoroethylene carbonate plus ethylene sulfate have a higher columbic efficiency, which they explain as having lower electrolyte degradation in the cell and lower charge endpoint motion, which they also describe as lower electrolyte degradation at the positive electrode compared to systems without the additives or with only one additive. They also tested the long-term cycling of the cells and found that at either 20 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Celsius, two additive systems, including ethylene sulfate with vinylene carbonate or fluoroethylene carbonate improves the battery system by reducing the capacity loss and lowering the polarization growth. When it comes to the reduction of lithium plating during fast charging, they found at a charging current of 2C, every cell began to plate lithium. However, cells with ethylene sulfate lose less capacity during plating. This indicates that the amount of plating in cells with ethylene sulfate is less than in cells without. So to wrap all this up and to summarize what we've talked about in this video, I think it's important that we don't get too bogged down into all the details. And here at the end of the video, just to have a little bit broader perspective of what's going on here. Basically, because of Jeff Don's research and the great findings he has talked about in this patent application, Tesla will be able to manufacture battery cells that don't need more than two electrolyte additives, which will simplify the manufacturing process even further and also lower the cost of battery cells, which of course falls right in line with what Tesla is working towards and what they want for the future. Once again, reducing the number of electrolyte additives in a battery may seem somewhat insignificant on a surface level, but every little reduction in cost and complexity is important and this will help Tesla further increase their competitive edge in electric vehicles and battery storage. Here at the end of the video, I once again want to say thank you to the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up and find out how you can support my work, I'll put a link in the video description below. Thank you so much.